Hello, I'm Alan Lane, Glenigan's Economics Director, and I'm joined today by David Fries, Chief Executive at the AIS FPDC. Hello, David. Hello, Alan. Today, we will be discussing the prospects for commercial property, key fit-out markets, and the related opportunities for interior specialists and product suppliers. The last two years have seen a progressive recovery in commercial sector activity, led in particular by an increase in office construction projects the value of commercial starts rose by 5% last year, building on a 14% increase in 2012. Furthermore, whilst the overall value of commercial work remains some way off its pre-crash peak, the number of commercial projects is closer to its 2007 level. This reflects changes in the makeup of commercial sector activity, with fewer high-profile new build schemes and more refurbishment projects, especially in the retail sector. The growth in refurbishment projects is especially encouraging for those operating in the fit-out sector, as such projects, such work typically accounts for a greater proportion of the overall cost than it does for new build schemes. David, we've seen a sustained recovery in commercial project starts over the last couple of years, and brightening economic prospects point to a further strengthening in activity over the next two. In which sectors are your members currently experiencing the greatest growth in workload? Well, I think the commercial sector is clearly an area that we're seeing very, very rapid growth. And uh, it started in London, but it's now spreading to the other major urban areas. And I think everybody's seeing some significant growth in that. Uh, we've seen that change in retail from uh, the out-of-town stores into uh, the high street, back to the high street. So an awful lot of shop refitting uh, jobs going through. And as serial, so chains are doing you know, uh, store after store after store. So we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, surprisingly, education. Uh, Nick Clegg, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister, gave the sector a real boost by uh, promising school meals to all children, uh, I think, at primary school level. So we've seen an awful lot of work around uh, small schools, building kitchens where they weren't required. Um, uh, so those are the major sort of growth areas. Uh, a lot of tin sheds going up, not a huge amount of fit out in that, but uh, to, to supply that change in retail from uh, the high street, or not so much the high street, but uh, the, the, you know, the out-of-town department store, shall we say, or the, the supermarket into the internet shopping. So we've seen an awful lot of that. Are there any particular sectors that are struggling at the moment? Well, health is, uh, is an issue. Uh, we're starting to see the, the, you know, the government spending cuts coming through them. And bear in mind, we haven't actually seen the cuts really dig. Uh, you know, that will come after the next election, I think. D regardless of who comes in, I can't see that either side will have a, gr a great deal of scope. But it's hit health hardest. So we've seen a real fall away in PFI projects. And the education uh, sector, despite that, that little boost we saw from Nick Clegg and also from population change. Which, you know, I didn't mention that first time around. Uh, particularly in London, we're seeing that because of that rise in urban population and population growth, the, the schools are having to build extra capacity and are very rapidly. So people on frameworks, I think, are really happy with that. People who aren't on frameworks, of course, not quite so happy. Um, but the education sector is, has uh, picked up. The latest Glenigan forecasts are for a broader based recovery over the next two years with growth in offices, retail and hotel and leisure. How can your members best capitalise on that growth in opportunities? Well, our members are telling us at the moment that they are at or very near to capacity. Uh, so I think actually the thing is to become a bit choosier. Uh, to, to be carefully select who you are working for and get as close to the money as possible. So many of them are choosing to work directly for clients where they can. We've seen a rise in, only today I saw uh, in Construction Inquirer a, a report that said that Construction Line is seeing a great deal, a, a greater increase in contractors looking to Construction Line to find supply chain or supply contractors. Uh, and I think that's a healthy sign that perhaps it you know, switched a bit uh, and that the specialist contractor in particular is really in a better position than they have been for, for many years. And so I guess it's be a bit choosier who you're working for and what terms and conditions you're working under uh, and uh, go from there, basically. Rising workload volumes come with their, their own risks. Um, what are the particular issues that you feel the fit-out industry will be facing over the next couple of years? And what steps do you think your members should be taking now in preparation for them? 
I think uh, the skills issue is going to be a, a very big one for the future of the industry. And uh, particularly, we're starting to see uh, labour costs rising. Um, and I think that's a continued trend. There will be skill shortages. Uh, at AIS FPDC, we're, we're busily putting together a training strategy to try and address that, but that's not a short-term fix. So uh, basically, if you've got labour, you've got good labour, you need to look after it uh, and get ahead of the problem. Uh, there's always a problem coming out of recession, uh, and we have been out for, for quite a while, I think, in the fit-out sector of working capital. Uh, and quite a few companies are still working through those contracts that they got at very low margin. And that's always a problem when you're growing fast again and you, you're not, your cash flow doesn't quite keep up. So it's really getting ahead of the problem, talk to your creditors nice and early rather than waiting till the last minute. Uh, I see those are the, the, the two really big issues. Um, we will inevitably see material prices rise. I think that's, that's just a, a factor. But then margins should also be rising to, to compensate for that, and more than compensate for that. So we see it as an opportunity to restore balance sheets to the pre-recession levels uh, and uh, you know, make hay while the sun shines. Hopefully this, is, this won't be a boom and bust. We'll be here for some time. Thank you for joining us for this review of commercial construction and the fit-out sector. I will be giving a further sector update at the AIS FPDC annual conference on the 14th of October in Manchester. Check out their website for details. In addition, we will be publishing a report on the growing take-up of BIM on current and planned projects in the sector. In the meantime, if you want to find out more about Glenagan's assessment of current construction industry activity and prospects, visit glenagan.com. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Glenagan for the latest project news and comments on the construction industry.